Today a pregnant lady came to the OPD and she was carrying an ultrasound which showed that the fluid surrounding the developing baby was less. So she was really worried as to why is this fluid less, is my baby safe inside, now what can I do to increase this fluid. So I thought I will be discussing less amniotic fluid today. Now less amniotic fluid or oligohydramnos as we call it, ye hota kya hai? So this is the fluid that surrounds the developing uh, fetus when it is inside the uterus. So where is this So in the, in the initial months of pregnancy, the amniotic fluid basically comes from the mother. So this mother ki uh, plasma se or placenta se secrete hota hai. But after 16th week of pregnancy, the fetal kidneys start to function. So then the fluid is mainly uh, made up by the fetal urine. Yeah, you heard it right. The amniotic fluid after the 16th week of pregnancy is mainly formed by fetal urine. Now then what is the normal uh, color or the odor of amniotic fluid? So normally it is colorless. At times it can be uh, pale yellowish or straw colored fluid but normally this uh, amniotic fluid has got no color and it has got no smell. So then what is the normal amount of fluid? So uh, the normal amount of fluid varies with the period of pregnancy. So during initial months of pregnancy, this fluid is less. Then as pregnancy uh, progresses, this fluid increases and uh, it increases throughout pregnancy and then it peaks at about 34 to 36 weeks when this is about 800 ml to 1 liter. Then after 36 uh, weeks, it starts to uh, decrease and then it plateaus till, till 40 weeks. So pregnancy is up to 40 weeks, that is 280 days. So at about 40 weeks, the amount of liquor is somewhere about 600 to 800 ml. But after 40 weeks, the liquor falls sharply. So that by 42 weeks of pregnancy, there is hardly 200 to 400 ml of liquor. That is why we never let the pregnancy go beyond 42 weeks. We try to deliver the pregnancy by 40 or maximum by 41 weeks because this is the major complication which we have in our mind that there is going to be severe oligohydramnios once the pregnancy crosses 40 weeks of uh, gestation. Then what does amniotic fluid contain? Is it just water? No. So during the initial months it consists mainly of water and electrolytes but after 12th to 14th week of pregnancy that is somewhere around 4th month of pregnancy it contains proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, hormones and even antibodies. Now I told you what the normal amount of liquor is according to the period of gestation but then the million dollar question is how do we measure the amount of fluid which is surrounding the developing baby. So that is uh, mainly done through ultrasound scanning. So there are two methods uh, to measure uh, amniotic fluid during ultrasound. So the first method is single vertical pocket. So what we do is that we put the ultrasound probe on the pregnant mother's abdomen and we locate a pocket of fluid which is free from the fetal body parts or the cord and we measure its depth. So anywhere between 2 to 8 centimeters is normal. Now if the single vertical pocket is less than 2 centimeters, then we call it oligohydramnios. The uh, second method to measure uh, amniotic fluid is AFI or amniotic fluid index. In this we divide the pregnant mother's abdomen into four quadrants and we measure the single vertical pocket in each quadrant and then we add it up together uh, and then we add them up together. So if this AFI is anywhere between 5 to 25 centimeters, that is normal. But if the AFI is less than 5 centimeters, then again it uh, signifies oligohydramnos. Now, uh, you know, we are talking about uh, amniotic fluid, but why is it so important? Why are we so worried that the amniotic fluid which surrounds the baby should not be less? Now that is there because amniotic fluid has got many, many important functions. So the most important function is that it allows the baby to move. So the baby can move freely in the mother's uterus and this helps in the development of the baby's muscles, bones and nerves. Then the baby also swallows this amniotic, amniotic fluid. So it helps in the development of the digestive system of the baby. The baby also breathes in this fluid. 
so it helps in development of the baby's breathing system that is the trachea the bronchus the alveoli the fluid also regulates the temperature around the baby the this fluid also has a cushioning effect meaning thereby that if you know there is a sudden maternal movement or uh, there is uh, some blow to the abdomen of the mother so this acts as a cushioning uh, or a shock absorber for the baby and the baby is safe inside it also helps in lubrication meaning thereby that it keeps the body parts especially the fingers and the toes of the baby apart because of the fluid which is uh, flow you know there in between these fingers and toes otherwise what would happen is that they would grow together and this is what is seen in uh, cases where there is oligohydramnios early in pregnancy one very important function of amniotic fluid is that it prevents compression of umbilical cord now umbilical cord supplies nutrients and oxygen to the baby now if the liquor is less or the amniotic fluid is less the uh, cord can be compressed between the baby and the uterine wall and so then the supply of oxygen as well as nutrients to the baby decreases and baby's growth also slows down so because of these major functions that the amniotic fluid uh, does inside the uterus and helps to develop the a uh, baby which is growing inside the uterus so if the amount uh, you know falls we get uh, tend to get void now this was all about normal amniotic fluid now we'll talk about oligohydramnios or less amniotic fluid as i told you if the single vertical pocket is less than 2 cm or afi is less than 5 cm on ultrasound then we diagnose this as oligohydramnios now what are the causes which leads to a decrease in amniotic fluid the causes for decreased liquor or oligohydramnios can be divided into three main groups so the first group are the maternal causes now the most most important cause for a decreased liquor is premature rupture of bag of uh, membranes now if your uh, bag of water which surrounds the baby that separates prematurely that is before 37 weeks of pregnancy or before onset of labor then obviously as all the fluid uh, drains out so the fluid which would be surrounding the baby would be less another important cause is if uh, the mother has got certain medical conditions like increased blood pressure or thrombophilia these again lead to oligohydramnios now if the mother is taking some medicines like um, ace inhibitors which is taken for high blood pressure or uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs which can be taken for pain these drugs as a side effect actually lead to decreased formation of amniotic fluid now the second major group is fetal causes so if there is any chromosomal abnormality in the baby or if there is any structural deformity in the uh, kidneys of the baby like i told you that after 16 weeks of pregnancy the main source of amniotic fluid is fetal urine so if there is any defect in the uh, baby's kidney suppose they are not formed all right or there is some obstructive uropathy then of course the baby would not pass an adequate amount of urine and so the amount of liquor would be less then uh, decreased liquor is also seen in babies who are not growing normally or in fetal growth restriction so whenever there is decreased supply of oxygen or blood to the baby which can happen because of many reasons then uh, the baby tries to give maximum supply to its vital organs that is the heart or the brain and because of this the blood supply to the fetal kidneys is less now because they are getting less blood supply so the kidneys start making less urine and so you will see that generally fetal growth restriction is always associated with oligohydramnios now if the pregnancy is more than 40 weeks like i told you that the liquor falls sharply after 40 weeks of pregnancy so in a post dated pregnancy that is a pregnancy which is more than 40 weeks you will be uh, able to see oligohydramnios in such cases or if the fetus has died in utero uh, which we call as intrauterine death obviously if the baby has died in utero then the baby is not forming any more urine and so the amount of liquor would be less the third group of uh, causes is placental the main uh, 
cause of placenta which can lead to decrease lyca is abruptio placenta. So this is a condition in which the placenta separates prematurely from the uterine wall. So this is the uterus, the placenta is there on the uterine wall. But if it separates from the uterine wall, then again this leads to uh, oligohydemnos. Normally placenta does not separate from the uterine wall till delivery of the baby. Once the baby delivers, then the placenta separates. But in abruptio, the placenta is separating prematurely and this is leading to oligohydemnos. Then in late pregnancy when oligohydemnos is seen, then it is mainly idiopathic, meaning thereby that we do not really find any cause. So oligohydemnos in early pregnancy can be due to all the causes that have enumerated, but generally about 50% of oligohydemnos which is seen in late pregnancy, that is in the third trimester after 28 to 30 weeks, in almost half the cases, we do not find any uh, cause for the decreased formation of lyca. Now, once the lyca is less, what are the complications which can be associated with it? The complications can be divided into fetal complications and maternal complications. So the main fetal complications are increased chances of miscarriage or abortion. Now, because the fetus uh, has got less space to develop, so what happens is that the shape of the skull might be different, the face can be flattened, there can be club foot, then because there is no liker and the baby can't move around freely, so these cases are associated with more malpresentation. So it can be a maybe a breech presentation or a transverse lie, then uh, it can also lead to stillbirths because what happens is when the uh, liker is less, the cord gets compressed and cord is carrying the blood as well as nutrients to the baby. So if the cord is compressed for a long time, it can also cause death of the baby inside the uterus. Then prematurity is another uh, major complication because what happens is that in case the lyca is less because of premature rupture of membranes because the bag of water is ruptured uh, before term. So the baby is premature when it is born. So prematurity is a very major concern in oligohydemnos. Maternal complications are seen more during labor. So such uh, pregnant women who have got oligohydemnos generally uh, experience a prolonged labor because of uterine uh, inertia. Then the induction of labor in such women is also more because the liker has decreased. So we do not generally wait till 40 weeks or the expected date of delivery and we might have to induce labor earlier in these patients. Then the chances of uh, such women undergoing a cesarean section is also higher. Now this is so because one, because of malpresentation. So if there is a transverse lie or a breech presentation, we will have to do a cesarean on such a patient. Secondly, because the liker is less, the cord tends to get compressed and then the oxygen and the blood supply to the baby decreases. So the baby's fetal heart would show changes. And if the fetal heart decreases, we'll need to do a cesarean section. If a pregnant woman develops oligohedemnios, then what is the management? What should we do? So the first thing that the woman needs to do is to keep herself hydrated. That means that take at least three liters of water or fluids every day. Because if you keep yourself hydrated, more fluid would be forming and that is helpful in your normalizing your amniotic fluid. There are many water rich fruits like watermelon, cucumber, so take more of those. Also coconut water uh, has been found to be very beneficial. It has got a lot of water obviously, but it, it even has minerals and nutrients which is very helpful for the baby's growth. Take adequate rest, that too on your side, it can be right or left side because when you sleep uh, flat, what happens is that it decreases the blood supply to your placenta which of course would mean that the blood supply to the baby would also decrease. So if you sleep on your side, whether it is left or right, that uh, improves the blood supply to the uterus and the placenta. Keep your medical conditions under control. Now suppose you have high BP or your sugars are not controlled, you're a diabetic. So please make sure that these conditions are controlled and you have a normal BP and a normal blood sugar. Now such women would also have 
more uh, antepartum fetal surveillance meaning thereby that more frequent ultrasounds will be done for them so this we do to see what is happening to the amount of lyca whether that is increasing or decreasing you know decreasing even further and the fetal growth if at any time we feel that the baby is not safe inside then we would be wanting to induce labor and deliver this patient now because uh, women have to be induced before their expected date of delivery or prematurely when the lycan is less. So we generally give corticosteroids injection to these women. So corticosteroids actually help in development or maturity of the baby's lungs. So even if the baby then delivers prematurely, we are rest assured that the baby would be able to breathe properly. So the main management of course then would be your uh, antepartum fetal surveillance and depending upon how the condition progresses uh, you would either continue with conservative management or we might need to deliver you. So whenever uh, oligohydemnios is diagnosed on ultrasound please don't uh, panic or you know get uh, too much worried or alarmed about it. Contact your gynec and they will decide the further uh, mode of delivery and management. So be aware and be safe.